So hi, it's RealMeUp. Uh, I wanted to show you my lecture uh, made with Coeur de Vandal and Reyes um, about the tool assisted speedrun and how to finish uh, Super Mario 64 in five minutes. So let's start right now. Uh, it's mostly made for you guys, the guy which are already making tool assisted speedrun, but if there is also people who are interested, they could watch that video too. I'm already uh, sorry for my great French accent. I may, I'm not an English speaker normally, so I'm sorry if there is some stuff that I think which are wrong or anything like that. So let's start. So as you see, we have this really nice video that the community has made before the presentation about the two assisted speedruns. This is what we are using when people are waiting and getting in the, the, the room. But let's start with what's really interesting us here is the lecture itself. So first, what's a tool assisted speedrun? So everything starts with the speedrun itself. And by definition, a speedrun is just something that uh, you want to finish a game as fast as possible. Then uh, there is different uh, way to do that. And um, the simple one, I would say, is the single segment. The one you think the first one, you start your console and then uh, it's finished. Uh, you, you just go to the end as fast as you can. So this is, for example, a video from uh, Half-Life 2. Uh, which is really interesting too. Uh, the guy is really fast, is really, really, really good. And it's just um, a part of the single segment uh, official fastest run right now of Half-Life 2. But there is also what we call the end segment. And this is also a, a, a part of one segment, a total segment of uh, Super Metroid made on a, on a, on a console. So as you see, you can use the saves inside the game to slice your run in several pieces and you will just improve that pieces. So as you can see, it starts at, the, at a really interesting part of uh, a save and so a few minutes later, it would be at the end of the, of the another, at, it would be at another save. Uh, let's make also the difference between the speedrun and the time attack or what we call also time trial. And the main difference is it's inside the game. So as you can see, this is a, a really famous Mirror Age game, which is great for speedrunning actually. And there is a timer inside the, the game itself. And that makes it uh, one of the most interesting games for that because you see that you have a timer and this is what a time trial is. It's because you are actually following the timer inside the machine and not an external timer that you are, uh, which is running for you. Um, another example which is really famous, it's Mario Kart Wii. Um, this is a really interesting run actually. Uh, oh yeah, I like the way it starts this one. Uh, so this is not still not a tool assisted speedrun, I want to, to explain that. This is only normal speedruns and I'm just explaining the difference between the, the several way to do a, a tool assisted speedrun. So as you can see is is really good and this is still a time trail because you see the time is 1778 is inside the game itself. Okay. And also there is a difference between the in-game time and the real time, and that's really important too. So I'm, we have this video, which is really interesting. Okay, so it is, it's uh, again Super Metroid. And you see there is two interesting things in this one. First, there is a timer inside the game itself, three minutes. Uh, and you, that's the time you need to leave the, to leave the, um, the spaceship. And also, uh, Something interesting is every time there is a door, like here, you see the timer stops, but the video doesn't. And that's really interesting for uh, tool assisted speedrun because that's really important. The timing you have, the time that you, that will be the official time you finish the game is not the in-game time, but the, actually the real time of the video. And that's really important. Also, um, that, that timer is not really true all the time because 
it stops so that's for sure really really weird and there is still in most of the game which are uh, adventure game uh, or some uh, RPG survival horror stuff like that um, you have an in-game time so the game itself is gonna tell you um, how long it, did it, take, it took you to finish the game and also some other stuff like uh, percentage on how much time and uh, how much the stuff you got during the, the whole game. So this is the end and you'll see that soon there will be uh, uh, an in-game time. So that's also interesting because in, in Tool Assisted Speedrun you can also try to get the best in-game time. Usually it is, but sometimes it's not. Because if you make a game really really slow down or something like that, you can have a really long real time and actually a really ga great in-game time. But if you want to, to be the best in in-game time, you have to precise it in your submission and you will, you will tell, yeah, so that's what I want to do. I wanted to, to achieve the best in-game time. So here it is. The operation was completed successfully, really fast, of course. And in clear time, 23 minutes. So that's what I were, we were talking about. Then let's move to another subject. So yeah, something which is also really important to understand when you're talking about tool assisted, it's made on an emulator. So an emulator is basically something really interesting because it's simulating one machine into another. Okay, usually you need a lot of, uh, it, you need to be really uh, powerful to simulate another machine, like this one for example, it's a really famous emulator, it's SNES 9X. Uh, here I'm going to play F-Zero from the Super Nintendo inside my Mac. Sorry, I'm on the Mac for all the guys from the Twisted Speedrun community who know that it's nearly impossible to test on the Mac. Anyway, uh, the main idea is to so simulate one machine into another. The, the main problem is you need a lot of power to do that, at least 10 times the power of the original machine to be able to emulate it. Also, you have another problem, it's hard and this is really interesting to the two categories of emulators because actually there is one which is trying to just simulate the result of the calculation. You, you could call it high uh, emulation or high level emulation, but we are really not using these kind of emulators. We want something which is really, really close to the true machine. So we are using low levels emulators. Actually, even if there is bugs in the machine itself, it has to be simulated and emulated. It's really important if you want to keep all the lags, for example, or the, all the problems that could be uh, that would be really happening in the real machine has to happen in the emulation. You need to be accurate. This is really the most important thing for an emulator on a tool-assisted speedrun. You must be accurate. Okay, and. Um, now, there is also something interesting. You need to play the real version of the game, the original version of games. So you can uh, actually, basically, so this is Nestopia. I'm going to play a really famous Super Mario Bros. game. And it's really a copy of the original cartridge binary by bit by bit, if you want. It's exactly the same game as the original. Uh, it's reacts the same, it looks the same, it's exactly the same game. Don't think it's a copy or anything or something has been uh, tr transformed between the real game and this one. It's exactly the same one. And I, again, <laughs> really suck bad when I'm playing. Okay, but that doesn't mean that you can't um, play a tool or tool assisted speedrun or even on, em on an emulator a game which is not original so for example this one which is super demo world uh, you can play games which are not original that's not really a problem you just uh, you just need to specify it uh, yeah you can play on a demo you can play uh, you can play on anything but just tell that you are playing on a special game and that's it and uh, this is a really nice game so why would we not do that on a twisted speedrun because it's not original that makes no sense so the super demo world really needs to to be tested and it's a really great one uh, yeah really beautiful one okay and now we are going to the objective and the philosophy uh, you must try to be as perfect as you can you are looking for a kind of absolute in the game and this is really really important uh, you are actually trying to be 
a kind of god mode playing guy or something like that, or like we like to say sometimes, like if Chuck Norris would play the game, that's what how he would play. Or actually no, because Chuck Norris would be just above God, and but whatever, that's 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 silly question. So uh, try to reach a, a kind of absolute. This is really really important, but it's not because you're reaching a kind of absolute that actually you are also. Um, I would say killing the the idea of the game or that's showing that most of the players were bad. When we are talking about computers playing, for example, we have this idea of Big Blue that beat Kasparov. But Gary Kasparov is not a bad chess player. Let's un let's understand that. It's not because he has been beaten by a computer that it makes him a bad chess player. That's Max Nelson is still one of the greatest chess players that ever been on Earth. That's not a problem. And still, Deep Blue which is here, it's still a great computer. They are both really, really good in what they are doing. It's not because one beat another that they are making them better or whatever. It's it's just a different tactics, different idea of how to play the same game. And that's really important when you're looking in absolute. It's not the way you are making the game which is important, it's the way you are playing it. Then uh, that's something really important too. You need to be awesome when you play. You need to be cool, you need to look great you need to be really really nice and that's a really nice video also to show that that actually um, when you are playing a game and if you are waiting in a game please look cool and this is really what I, this is one of the best example I found on, on TASvideo.org because the small only run of Super Mario World is really great for that when he is waiting is really making awesome uh, entertaining stuff so just to remember you if you don't know the run he is in small only so he's not allowed to take any of the mushrooms and he's also showing bugs and really making a, amazing tricks during the whole run that's that's amazing what he is doing here right now and it's highly entertaining he won't earn any frame doing this it's just that it's nice to watch and this is really important. You need to make something which is really, really great to watch all the time. Okay. Then that's a good question too. Are you making a kind of art or kind of um, art creation when you are making a tool assisted speedrun? And uh, it's a really big question. Uh, we talked a lot about that uh, with um, my colleagues like uh, Cœur de Vandal and Rayas. It's a quite, quite good co and complicated question. Uh, will My question would be if Leonardo da Vinci would be, uh, Leonardo da Vinci for the Italianos, um, would be here, what would he think of the tool assisted speedrun? I mean, someone like him would look for such uh, an absolute in, 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 in form and in, in, in great things. Uh, I think he would like it, and maybe he would be one that I don't know. But I think if Leonardo da Vinci would be um, alive right now, I think he would like to make tool assisted speedrun if he, of course, would play games. I don't know, but that's an interesting question. Uh, but there is world topics about that, and it's so big that I don't want to discuss too much about that right now here. Okay. Next, uh, it will be the history. How did it start? So actually, everything starts with uh, Doom. Uh, in the Doom um, community, I would say, uh, they were starting to make some build demo. That's how they called it. So the main idea was to actually play games with, for example, slowing down the game and making great stuff, modifying some few lines of code to be able to make your own levels and stuff like that. And this is really the starting because they were trying to slow down the game. So this is the first community who used um, tools to play games, I would say. But the real one, the one that everybody heard about, is this one. This is Super Mario Bros. 3 uh, by Morimoto. So this guy actually made the real first tool assisted speedrun like we are used to, to see, you see, with a movie replay. And uh, he made something really nice. The game is really good. A lot of people have seen this one. It's made vil millions of views on YouTube. And everyone thought, wow, that guy is crazy. He's playing so well. Uh, that's really incredible. He, he may have spent so much years doing that video. He's playing so well. Yeah, but he's in Tula City Speedrun. But nobody knew 
that it was possible before and he forgot to tell. So it has been a big problem. Actually, he told, but in Japanese and of course most of us, which are not really uh, Japanese friendly, didn't understood that the, actually that guy was playing into the city speedrun and um, it has been a big problem for the community then because everybody told us uh, that told the two city speedrun were uh, cheaters or um, just lying about how they did their run but actually never wanted to to lie huh? So then the, the 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 public started to understood what it was and how it was made because people are not stupid and they're trained to understand themselves and there was this great guy, um, I think he's called Biscuit, maybe you know him, and he made his first website. Um, it was Biscuit before, but uh, now it's tasvideo.org, and it's really, really important because this is the the art, the heart, actually, of the tool assisted speedrun. That's where it lives. That's really the most important website if you want to learn about tool assisted speedrun. So it's it's a really well-made website where you can find all kind of games, uh, you can also uh, see everything. The community there, it's a really important website, but don't worry, we will talk about that later. And uh, yeah, also they made something really interesting on this website. It's the introduction. Welcome to TS video. You see an introduction why we are here. Actually, most of the stuff I'm telling you right now is just translating what there is on this website mostly. And uh, so that's really important that they made this work of explaining and sharing the, with the word the, the tool assisted speedrun. Okay, then there is our work, especially. So this is uh, our blog with uh, Cœur de Vandal and our broadcast, which is called 88 miles per hour. We are commenting some uh, tool assisted speedrun. You maybe you, you have seen some of them. And we are also um, sharing information about tool assisted speedrun. And of course, making this lecture for you. Okay, and this is a, an extract of our broadcast, webcast, whatever you want, podcast, you can call it the way you want. And yeah, so we have a really nice uh, intro and you'll see that um, we are trying to, to be a, as entertainment as your runs guy. Okay, and we are yeah showing our a pretty face with beard to to entertain people and commenting as as well as we can the tool assisted speedrun. Okay. Then it will be something that everybody is waiting for. I would say is how the tool assisted speedrun are made, and this is really interesting, of course. First, there is something which is really important, and you know you need to know how the game is made itself way before you're doing a tool assisted speedrun and you need to know it so well. I'm going to ex to show you something which is really interesting. This is the game resource uh, resources of the NES Super Mario Bros. So this is the, I would say the, the web page where you will know all the tricks you need to know on Super Mario Bros. if you want to test it one day. And you see that they're explaining how to do here the wall jump, for example, or the flagpole glitch, or the flagpole glitch using an enemy. And as you can see, it's a really, really long web page. But this is important. You need to first learn the game and also to, uh, I would say, um, share with the others all the tricks you discovered in the game to be able to test it well. So it's a really long, fully uh, um, described web page with all the things you need to know about the tool assisted speedrun of one game only. This is only for Super Mario Bros. Okay, it's one of the biggest one. It's one of the game which has, I don't know, much tool assisted speedrun try to to, to uh, speedrunners try to make that uh, that game. But the, the, this game resources show uh, how complicated it can get to learn uh, a game. We, even before you're actually testing, you need to make so much uh, research about how the game works, how the physics works, uh, what you can do when you count in a game, that it is really important. 
Okay, so the the page is really long. I'm not gonna go through uh, through it at all in, in all, but it's it's really really great. They made a, a fantastic work on that on that game for sure. Okay, but that's not the only thing you 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 need. You need also the tools and what we call the cyber playing. So you need to be able to manipulate tools, and there is different kind of tools. And I want to talk about that just uh, just before we start uh, to show you how to use tools. Okay, so the tools itself, there is two kinds of tools. Tools that will make you um, a cyborg. That's why we call it the cyber plane. So the idea is you're going to go above your human limits, your human skills, so you can slow down the game, for example, so that will make you amazingly precise in the game. You can also edit your um, your the button you press per frame so which is really useful to to be really precise in what you're doing and there is also another kind of tools which are less known but which are also really really important it's like the tools which are going to give you information about the game for example how much pixel per, per frame your character is moving or how much exactly a bus has a, a, a point of a life point uh, or stuff like that. And this is really important because you can check exactly what's the truth, I would say, in the game and not what you are seeing in the game. And this is really important. So this is really the major two kind of tools you have, the one that makes you playing really well and the ones that give you more information that the game is actually really giving you. But let's see that in, in real. So my friend Rias, uh, okay, he made he is uh, I would say a real one, a real tool assisted speedrunner. Thanks to him, he recorded himself making the first level of uh, Super Mario World and trying to make quite I would say a nice uh, first level of to, uh, tool assisted level of Super Mario World. And because he camtasiaed he, he camtasia himself, we will be able to see how it worked and how he made it. Okay, so as you can see, we have uh, first this big screen. So we have SNES Navix re recording 1.51 version 6. So this is a really nice emulator, especially made by the Tool Assisted Speedrunner to be able to re record. And I will explain that just uh, a bit later. We have the, so Raya's playing. Just something I want to, to, to show is displaying the, the, the key, the input key. Uh, on the screen. So what you see below uh, on the screen is, like, for example, A or uh, left and Y and stuff like that. It's actually the key he is pressing in that frame. So that's really important because like that we will see what he is doing. And on the right, it is a RAM watch and we will go back there also. Okay, so the first really important thing, it's the save state. So most of the emulators have have say state it's really simple it's saving the game at one point it saves everything so it's like a great save you can save any time any frame and it will stay you can go back exactly to that state it saves the state it's, it's not a normal save in the game it saves the state of the memory state of the wall machine at one point and if you go back to that point it will be exactly the same one as you save so you can do it in each frame if you want and this is really important because like that you can record and start again and start again exactly at a really precise point not for example at the beginning of the level but anytime you want and this is really important and that's why also most of the emulators have it because it's really useful for bad players i would say and also if you can't save in the real game or anything save states are really useful then there is something and i'm sure that you maybe heard about it before the re-record thing so it's when you re-recording yourself playing the game and you see here it was written movie re-record zero 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 for example right now it's because Rayas is trying to kill that Koopas as fast as he can and also to be uh, awesome cool when he's doing it and of course not losing time either and every time he's missing I think he's gonna do it soon he's gonna re-record himself so the main idea is actually you are making a movie of yourself playing the game so this is one movie snapshot so it means that from here I'm going to start 
to continue my movie. It's like editing a real movie, actually. But from this point, from this movie snapshots, he's gonna go back to this uh, movie snapshots every time he, he, he misses. So he's using a save state and he's going back to the movie snapshot. So let's see, I think he's gonna lose somewhere and yeah, maybe here he's gonna make a new set. Yeah, you see, re record. And every time he's doing it, every time he's doing a re record, actually, it's count as one re record. And at the end, you will see how much re record has been made for uh, this run uh, in total. So you have to, that we all know that re records are. Um, uh, it's not the number of record won't tell you if it is a great run or not but still you need a lot really a lot of re record to do a great tool assisted speed run most of the time we are counting that in average there is seven re record per per second but on some few games it can go way above it and on some others less but it's it's really important to understand that there is Anyways, there will be always a lot of record because you need to start and start and start again the same part to be perfect, of course. Okay, then the frame advance, and that's really important too. It's allow you to slow down the game. First, it can slow down the game, but it can also really slow it so much that you just need to press one key to go to the next frame. This is really important if you want to be precise, because even if you would have the safe states and the re-record, if the game is going at its normal speed, so 60 frames per second, uh, at least in, your, uh, in, in, in America and in, in Japan, in Europe, we were poor, so we had only 50 frames per second. Anyway, uh, you need to slow it down. So that's what the frame advance is doing. It's really useful, and if you don't have it, it will be really difficult to make a tool-assisted speedrun. Okay, then the RAM watch. So that's what we were speaking about. And let's look at it a bit closer. So here we are. So in, in, you see in the RAM watch, it's uh, some different values which are connected to the physics of the game. Okay, and the one we would like to, to highlight here is the 49. So this is the horizontal velocity of the character, which is Mario here. And it's really important that he kept the, the 49 all the time. You see, for example, he went just below 49 and he decided to re-record because, of course, it was going to be slow. Something they discovered also in that game using the RAM watch, and I told you it was really important to have good information about the game, is actually that when Mario is, is uh, running uh, at his maximum speed, it's actually not always at 49 but it's a it's a random number between 46 and 49 so when you are at your maximum speed you are actually not at your maximum speed you are this is a variation between 49 and 46 and the only way to keep 49 all the time is to jump all the time every time you touch the the ground you need to press um, a, a jump key to go back to 49 and never leave 49 you see again he, le he left 49 we record and we record to keep the 49 all the time. There is also other uh, variability, so the uh, vertical velocity, original position, horizontal subpixel, and this is information you have in the game, but you don't know what they are meaning. So first you need to understand what they are, and this is why there is nuts on the side. And this is also why the community is, is important. This is also why the game resources is important is to get this information right. Because if you don't know that the 49, 45 is your horizontal velocity, it makes no sense. You see also that there is a in-level uh, lag indicator and the score. And you can see the score, it's uh, um, 1680 and it is 16800 uh, on the real game. So that's that fits. Okay. So let's look a bit closer to how the this is working because this is really interesting. So you see it's trying to keep the 49 and I, it will show you also something which is interesting about the physics in the game. Uh, you see he missed it, he, he went to 45. Uh, it's that the game you need a few frames uh, before pressing a button to actually make it work. It feels really good when you're playing, but when you're a tool assisted speedrunner, it means that you have to, you see, if he's pressing A three frames before he actually jumps, because that's how the game reacts. You need to press the button for a number of frames. It's not only one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's three, sometimes it's 15. Uh, it's always different. You see, he's pressing f during three frames A and he jumps. 
and it needs to do that just before it touches the ground and don't try this at home you'll you'll die <laughs> it's really really hard okay next things which are really important if it's switch yeah okay the x editing so what is the x editing so it looks like that uh, this is a Taz Movie Editor version 0 0.12. Uh, it's a really interesting tool because actually it's allow you to share or correct your uh, your input on each frame. So the main idea is really simple. You have frames on each frame. It records your input itself and you can modify them. Uh, it's useful for many stuff, but the most interesting one is actually that you can share your tool assisted speedrun with someone else and you can try to improve only a part of it because if you're making a movie, uh, you will maybe make one small mistake and instead of re-recording -re everything because you need to make it in one row, you can change something in here and that's really important also especially when you want to share because in the community you will never be alone usually making your tool assisted speedrun you can always find someone to help you okay then there is a scripting the scripting is something which is pretty new um, they are still working on it so for example you can use a lua script to control the game for you and be able to do amazing stuff in the game through a, a script which is playing for you, I don't know if it is exactly what we can we can call playing, but still, the, the main idea is there. Okay, then there is uh, what we call the brute force uh, mathematics, uh, um, and this is quite complicated, it's when you are trying to force the game to do something uh, that it's, it's really hard to get, and for example, and I'm going to talk to the, they are both connected, the, the brute force and the luck manipulation. Uh, luck manipulation, you, you may have heard that name a lot because it's really interesting too. Uh, how to say, you can, luck in a game is, is not static. It's not uh, like in real life. If in real life you roll dice, it will be impossible to predict if you're going to make a six of one or a five. In a game it's lessly different because actually the, 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 the luck is calculated by the console itself. So there is many ways to calculate the luck. For example, it can be uh, the state of the RAM when you start the console. It can be um, uh, how many inputs did you press since you start the game. It can be, uh, I don't know, where your character is uh, when uh, in the screen when you're making the, the luck random stuff. So it can be manipulated because you, if you know how the luck is working, you can influence the luck itself and get what you want, when you want, where you want. And that's really, really interesting. One of the best example we have about that is, for example, in uh, Mario Kart, if you want to get all the time the, the perfect thing, it's possible. Uh, and this is really interesting to see how it works because actually um, you need to know um, really how the game is working so it's really connected again to the game resources it's really really important so Reyes is, uh, is making his tool assisted speedrun we are nearly done with all the tools you can use and to do luck manipulation you know you need all that tools it's not really um, it's not really easy to do uh, for example, I'm giving, yeah, it's another in interesting one. Uh, if you want to do luck manipulation, sometimes we discover that some um, uh, inputs, for example, start or select on a, on a Super Nintendo, even if they are not used in the game itself, they will manipulate the luck. So you need to press all the keys on each frame to see which one is the fastest, because that's always your goal. Try to think that you need also to be the fastest as you can. Uh, doing the tool assisted speedrun. So first you need to manipulate the luck to get what you want, but you need to get it as fast as possible and that starts to get really crazy. Uh, if you want an example, you can try to watch again the Monopoly run, which is really important for that because it's a 30 second run and there were more than 500,000 re-record on that run because it was really hard to get all the luck manipulation you need in that game. Okay, I'm going just to move a bit forward the, um, the video here. So let's watch now the, the speedrun he made and how it looks now. So it took him something like 15 minutes to make the, the, it's the first level of 
uh, of Super Mario World, so it shows you also uh, how long and hard it can be to make a tool assisted speedrun because as you see it's a really simple level, that's only the first level of, uh, of Super Mario World but it can get really really more complicated when it is the hardest level, I can tell you that. Um, so as you see, it's playing really well, and that's 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 amazing. But it's made with a tool-assisted speedrunner, of course. So now let's switch to let's move to um, a spirit, because this is also really important in the tool-assisted speedrun community. It's mostly a, a spirit. So let's go back to tsvideo.org and let's see the forums. And as you can see, the forum is really big. It's really uh, well documented. There is a lot of people. It's really a moving community. And it is really important that you are never alone doing a tool assisted speedrun. As you can see, this is a tool assisted labor laboratory. There is plenty of uh, threads. It's really great. Uh, they are talking about everything you see, palindromic uh, uh, tool assisted speedrun, PC tasing tool, uh, finding ink boxes, uh, I don't know, everything that you can see, my projects, everything. There is a lot of these uh, subjects discussed everywhere in the forum, and it's a really, really great one. Okay, then there is also something else, the IHC. So this is the IHC of uh, the TS video uh, IHC, where you see right now they were Adelicat and Arukado talking about something like, uh, uh, um, I think it was about, uh, can you test the Wii or something like that? And if you need an SSD uh, hard drive or something like that. So it was a really interesting discussion. They were there on, uh, on the IHC. Uh, it's, a lot of the tool assisted speedrun uh, speedrunner are there. They are talking together, giving them uh, information. Everything. It's it's where the the community is living in real time. Most of them. <laughs> it's really interesting. If you want to talk to them, that's where you should go. Okay. Then, like I said, the spirit, and I want to show you one video to, um, uh, yeah, make a good example of that spirit. I think. So you may know the game, Zelda Ocarina of Time, which has been tested recently and it's a really amazing uh, tool assisted speedrun. And I wanted to show you that one because actually it's using all the tricks you can ever imagine in a game to build it. So first he, he jumped above that uh, bridge with his bomb, which is uh, actually really amazing. Uh, then he's doing something called the reverse bottle adventure and switching object in a bottle using crazy systems is really, really, really amazing. Right now he's making, I would say dungeons because he's getting some uh, medal for doing dungeon and you see the Ocarina has turned to a bomb. It's highly complicated stuff, but that's the spirit. If you think it's impossible, first ask, think, try, try again, try again and maybe you will make it and it will look amazing like that run because I can tell you that if you want to finish Ocarina of Time in only 56 uh, minutes like they made it needs really you need to believe that it is possible first and that's really amazing okay okay I wanted to talk to a, a little bit about the desynchronization and I know that all the tool assisted speedrunners who watch we are, we, which are watching this video right now are going to shiver a little bit because yes this is a really really bad problem and I want to show that to everyone because it's doing um, yeah so this is a hack again of uh, Super Mario World and this is one of the best examples I found of desynchronization so you see it's playing well, but oh, what? It died in the tool assisted speedrun, it's gonna lose time. No, actually it's a desynchronization. Um, one frame, it's not the right uh, inputs, and now uh, Mario is doing stupid stuff. He is, yeah. As you can see, that's really interesting that if there is no one behind the tool assisted speedrun, but the console don't care, it's just stupid. So you see, this is Mario and he's really happy. He's, um, I don't know to say he had problem recently, you know, Peach is not really nice with him all the day and he prefer to die. Anyway, that's a good example of desynchronization that if you are not aware about um, 
that you need the new moon really that's really important if you if you ever thought that it was a robot playing that's not the truth you need the human behind the twisted spirit because you see the console itself it can make stupid things and don't care about that okay so let's um, switch to the next topic okay and it's a really interesting one also that we switch from the tool assisted speedrun to the tool assisted speedrun we have um uh, i need to translate that that's not that simple with um with changes with uh problems on the run but it will be clear uh, on the next one so you can make some different starting conditions yeah the right word would be conditions sorry so first there would be a different starting condition for example a, a one player run versus a two player run so this is a oh, actually this is a really old tool assisted speedrun you see it's called biscuit still and this is um, uh, the first uh, the one player run of uh, ship and Dale on ness uh, made by uh, genisto and uh, you see well, it's a tool assisted speedrun it's playing quite well and everything it's still available because it's still the fastest run for a one player run, but there is also the uh, Dragon Zix uh, Zik uh, Tool ST Speedrun made with two players. You see, it's playing the, the two players, and it's another run actually. Um, it's a bit faster, but it's normal because there are two, so it's another kind of run. Okay, so that's a, a condition, a, a starting condition, which is a bit different one or two players. Okay. There is also the most, the fastest run with a character, uh, not only uh, one, but you can do it with several characters. So this is a, a, an extract of our broadcast, and this is uh, Super Street Fighter 2 on Super Nintendo, and uh, they made two runs, one with Ken, one with Zangief, because they didn't know exactly which one was the fastest one, so they decided to make two runs. Uh, it's hard to say that one is better than another, actually, we just know that, okay, Zangief is going to be faster than, uh, than Ken. But it's two different runs, and they are still both available because they are both interesting, and this is the fastest way with Ken, or the fastest way with Zangief. Okay. Now, uh, you can also make runs on hacked version of the game, like we said. And let's move again to the the to the super demo world. Here we are. And uh, you can so make a twisted speed run on a hack game. That's really not a problem. If the game is working on the real console, there is no problem. You can have the tools, you can have everything you need to make it. So why shouldn't you not do it if it is a great game? So again, here we are, we have a great game test, even if it is a hack, no problem. Yeah, yeah of course, it's playing well. Okay. Then you, 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 then you can also change the objective. You can make variations about the, the objective itself. So you can make a 100% run, and this is a submission of uh, Super Metroid and Super NES. Uh, so this is the all items one, so what we would call the 100% one, in one hour, eight minutes, and that's really, really nice. So you can also see about how it looks a bit on the website itself. You can see that you can download the SNES 9X uh, movie file, you can see the BitTorrent file, it's a video file, uh, that you can s watch it on YouTube, on Viddler, sometime on uh, Dailymotion. So it's really available everywhere. You can see the rate of the movie, 9.1 .what rating. It's a really good, really good vote, uh, really good run also, but that's true. Um, you can discuss the movie. You can see the oldest one, the obsolete movie, and you can also view the publication and everything. So that's really interesting. And also the short description about how the, what was the idea of the Twisted Speed Run when he made it and some few comments about that. Um, on the right of it, you can see that actually this is the objective, what he has made in his run. So 100% completion, like I said, it's an 100% run. Take damage to save time, so it means that he's going to take damage to save time. Heavy glitch abuse, so it talks by itself. Heavy luck manipulation and the gear, uh, it's action, genre and platform. Okay. But there is also the run which are aiming for the lowest 
uh, percentage of the game. And this is another Metroid because it works really well with the percentage. And this is a zero percentage one in 1 hour and 13 minutes. So you can see that it's a low completion, uh, takes damage to save time, and, and it's nearly the same uh, thing, but it's the, the low percentage one. Okay, you can also look for a high score. That would be actually a really usual thing. And this is uh, Tetris on NES. So it's uh, the fastest way to get to 999,999 uh, points uh, in 3 minutes and 11 seconds. So aim for maximum score, which is a high score, best ending, use warps, everything. Okay. Then there is something also which is... Uh, which is really important. It's the variation, but how the game is working itself. And uh, so, for example, 100% of kills. So it's inside the game. It's not uh, the hundred percent. For example, you can see it. It's something that it's uh, the game is telling you if you made or not uh, how much you made of the game inside. Here, it's more about uh, some kind of different game. So it mostly works with the classic uh, shmups game, shoot them ups game, so like Gradius 3, that you're gonna kill all the enemies on the screen. So this is a 100% of kill game. But it works also, for example, with games like uh, beat them ups game or stuff like that, because you need to kill all the enemies to go to go through. So it will be a 100% friend too. Okay, there is also another kind of friend. Uh, the run no damage. So you are not taking any damage. And it works also with Gradius because of course taking damage would kill you and we, you would lose time. So it, it makes no sense to do to do that. So here he's killing everyone as fast as possible, as well as he can. With uh, It's a really nice run. If you don't know it, uh, you, you should watch uh, the Gradius runs. They are really amazing. Then there is another kind of runs. Um, which are really funny, so I'm going to explain that in real time. Okay, so this is a Contra 3 run, and this main idea is you're going to remove something from the gameplay. For example, shooting. So in this run, which is called the Pacific run of Contra 3, is going to go is, go, is going to finish the game, but without using using the lowest ammo as possible. So he don't, he don't want to use ammo unless it is really needed. So he's going to only kill uh, bosses mostly because he needs to kill the bosses to, to make the game move on. But that's all he's doing. And he's quite fast. <laughs> that's a crazy thing. And in a game in like Contra, not shooting, it's, it's, it's really, really crazy. I mean, that makes nearly no sense. But that's great. That's a beautiful run also. And the idea was great to make in the Contra. And they have also a lot of humor uh, in, uh, on the TS videos because the speedrunner itself told that there were some budget uh, restriction in, um, in the world they are living in, in, uh, in Contra 3. And uh, they had no money for ammo anymore, so they need to be uh, economics, uh, to be careful with their ammo and not shoot uh, if it was not necessary. Okay. But there is even worse than this. You can also remove a wall button on a two button uh, <laughs> controller. So this is the uh, Wokathlon of, uh, wok of uh, Super Mario Bros. Uh, the main idea is you're never run, so you're never using the, the B button, <laughs> you're only allowed to use the A button to jump. And it's funny to see that in, in, in terms of game design, actually, it's a really weird idea that you can finish a game without using one of the buttons of the paddle. Anyway, it works pretty well and happily had uh, probably a lot of fun doing that run. Okay, then um, there is simultaneous run. And this is really crazy. Let me show you and explain. Okay, so the main idea is you're gonna use the same inputs for two games. So basically you have one joypad for two games. Yeah, yeah, one joypad for two games. So actually he's doing Mega Man X and Mega Man X2 at the same time. He's doing the two games at the same time with the same paddle. Okay, it's, it's, it's completely crazy, but it was possible. It's a really an amazing run for that. But it's right also that the physics between the two games are really close because it's actually exactly the same game. It's only new graphics and some 
a bit of new moves and new uh, possibilities, but that really, really looks the same. And he's and it's finishing the two games nearly at the same time. That's really uh, impressive. But you remember, we talked about the spirit in a two assisted period. And if someone is making um, two games at the same time, there will be another one thinking, two? That's not enough. Let's do four. And this is the f Mega Man 3, 4, 5, and 6 together. So we are still on games which are uh, highly similar. Sim uh, sorry, which are uh, quite the same in the physics because it's still Mega Man and Mega Man, it's, a, it's Mega Man, you know how it works, it's only new levels, but the physics is exactly the same. Even technically, it's really close, even if they all look good. And so in with one paddle, one input is going to do the four game at the same time. That's really crazy, but that's possible. But like I said, you know, in, in a tool assist is speedrun, what is important is the spirit. It's what you can do. You need to always think, oh, that's impossible. We'll never do it. So why are we doing this, you know? But actually, that's not true. And we can go a bit further. No, he's not going to do six or eight runs at the same time. He's going to play different games, different physics in game. So this is Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros 2, Super Mario Bros 2 in Europe or in America, which is known actually, we will call it Doki Doki Panic, and Super Mario Bros 3. So he's doing the three, the four games all together with only one paddle. And that's crazy because really the physics between the first two ones, so Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 2 compared to Doki Doki Panic, the European version of Super Mario Bros. 2, it's really, really crazy because it's not the same game. Still, he is able to finish the four games together. That's really amazing. Really, I'm always impressed when I see that run. It's a pretty new run and it's it's a really, really amazing run. For that, it's, uh, it's that's the spirit, you know? When you want to do two assisted speed run, think about what's impossible may be possible actually in two assisted speedrun. Okay, so there is also what we would call the variation of tomorrow, what the future can do for us, what will be the future? And that's uh, that's a good question. I think we should ask um, the, the two assisted speedruns, uh, speedrunners themselves. But we can think about, I don't know, um, uh, two platforms together. I don't know if it would be a good idea, but for example, doing um, uh, Aladdin on Super Nintendo and Mega Drive at the same time, or doing two different games, completely different game at the same time. I don't know, one platform game on, the one, on, on, on one side and a beat them up or shoot them up on another side. That would be interesting too. Uh, we can also think of removing other buttons or no buttons at all. I don't know. There is plenty of uh, variations that you can think about uh, inside gaming and I uh, think the, we'll see new variations uh, all the time in the future because it's only... If you have an idea, the question is not uh, can you do it, it's do you want to do it or not. Okay. Then... Yes. So this is really important too, from the tool assisted speedrun to the tool assisted super play. Because um, why, why are you staying only finishing the game as fast as possible? We can maybe do something also really interesting without trying to finish the game as fast as possible. Uh, just by playing around with the game, that's something really important. Because super playing just means by definition that you're playing well, it doesn't mean that you want to finish the game uh, as fast as possible. So this is a, a two speed speedrun of Mortal Kombat 3 Ultimate, which is one of the funniest runs made on a, on a fighting game, I think, because it's a completely crazy game anyway. Uh, Samsung is a, it's a crazy character because he can be a new character, and the game is bugged. Uh, the, game, the, the AI is completely stupid. Uh, there were many, many things. And you see, it's playing with the game. It's not trying to be as fast as possible finishing the game. It's just showing you yeah, crazy stuff like that in the game. Then there, the, oh yeah, this one also, <laughs> uh, one of the most famous uh, super play for fun, uh, two listed super play. It's the ISS Deluxe uh, run, so it's one of the best football match ever I ever watched. I mean, uh, without talking about real matches and everything, that's really the best football match I've ever watched. Uh, there is a lot of goals, crazy things. Uh, the the 
Yeah, it's it's really an amazing run for that. Everything is completely crazy. He's really making the console get going crazy, and that, that's that's fun. That's that's so much fun. Okay, but there is also um, what we would call artistic super play, and this is really interesting because uh, it's a brand new idea. So this is a a, a Baxter uh, run from uh, Tetris, and um, yeah. Let's watch it a little bit because it's a really, really nice one. Because he's not trying to beat Tetris, it has been made, it, uh, it's uh, really interesting. He's trying to do something completely different. He's trying to do something which looks cool in Tetris. And what would look cool in Tetris? I don't know. But like I said, you know, uh, in a Tula City speedrun, everything is about a spirit. What can you do and how can you do it? And yeah, can you really do it? And is doing, as you can see, it starts to to be to be possible to to see it now. Is doing um, a texture, yeah. Is doing a, a texture inside Tetris, a kind of uh, mosaic motif inside the game, which is really really amazing. First, you need the idea, and then you need the skills also to do that. And of course, in two assisted speedruns, that's the best thing to do. Uh, as you can see, is using, uh, if you want a good example also of luck manipulation, Tetris is perfect because the statistics of the game normally should be the same uh, on each uh, uh, characters you can have, the T, the L, the S, uh, the Z, uh, the O and everything. But as you can see, he has no square at all, or, or he had only one since the beginning. Oh, two, yeah. So he's really uh, manipulating the luck inside the game itself to get exactly what he wants to to make that uh, that amazing texture. And there's also something that I really like in that in, in that run. It's you you you're always thinking he's gonna die. <laughs> you know, you always think he's not gonna go any further. It's too high. Yeah, no, it can't go any further. You see, it can't move anymore. That's crazy. And actually. It's a tool assisted speedrun, you know? <laughs> He's always gonna try to go higher and higher and higher and, and be and do his best to entertain you uh, till the end. Yeah, yeah, it's not finished. Ah, yeah, oh, now it is. Okay, so that's a really interesting one too. There is another one I wanted to show you, and this is one made by myself with uh, a great uh, a, a friend called Alden. He programmed that thing, and I, I used it to make uh, a nice uh, a nice drawing inside um, inside the game. So it's called a tool assisted Mario Paint. So it makes no sense again because Mario Paint is definitely not a game that you can finish as fast as possible, but it's a game that you can make nice drawing. And the main idea was to do a kind of um, music video for a friend uh, in, a, in the 8-bit scene, which is making music on a Game Boy. And I use this idea of Alden with a, with a great drawing uh, of the doors actually inside the, inside the game. So. This is also a good example of what we call scripting or Lua uh, gaming. Uh, so the main idea is not a twisted speedrun that I've made uh, with my hands, actually. Huh? Uh, it's really programming to assisted speedrun, mostly. The main idea here is to use... Um, uh, first, you need photoshops to... You take a picture, any pictures you want, okay? Yeah, then you go in Photoshop, you are... Uh, done scaling the, 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 the resolution of the picture itself to fit inside the, the, the Mario Paint uh, game. And also you, you're reducing the number of colors because there is way too much colors in normal pictures right now. You need to, 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 dun, to dun the colors to 12 colors. And you need also then to export it in the right format when it's done. Uh, you can uh, just uh, play, yeah, you need a Python uh, programming uh, uh, script, actually, to switch this uh, information about the, the painting itself, how it's, it's made in Photoshop, to control uh, for the game. Because right now you just have a, a picture which has the right resolution and the right colors, but it's still not playable, I would say, by the console itself. So you're using a Python script, which is transforming that inside um, controls itself. It's moving, and that's the, the great work of Arden here. That's it. It works well uh, using the transformation from the, the pictures itself to controls, to inputs, if you want, in the game itself. 
Then when you have this, you are going inside the, the this uh, emulators, which is a S99X, we talked about it also before, and you are playing a Lua script uh, made by the Python script you had before. Uh, and also, because it would be really, really slow if you are only doing it that way, you need to um, uh, play it as fast as possible. So you unlocking, I would say, the speed of your emulator to make a nice video. And that's how you get an amazing drawing in, uh, in Mario Paint using uh, different tools. But it's a really interesting one also to, to see that uh, the idea of making a tool assisted Mario Paint. Yeah, here we are. Okay. Okay, so then there is one one of my favorite, I think, tool assisted speedrun. It's the Brain Edge uh, tool assisted speedrun because here we have everything. We have an artistic speedrun because you see he's making amazing drawing in the game. But we have also uh, um, something really, really complicated at the same time because he's tricking the game itself uh, the 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 numbers is making it's the right answer but it is drawings and that's really really amazing because that's really about that idea of do you think it's impossible okay let's look uh, if it's true or not and let's make a tool assisted speedrun about that uh, everything started about that run in Japan because you discovered that uh, when you were making some crazy uh, shapes uh, which looks like drawings, it would be the right answer because you can actually lie to the detection system inside the game itself. If you want, the console is interpreting what you wrote on your screen and is trying to compensate what may be wrong. So there is different uh, uh, way to do that. For example, it's getting the global shape, but also inside shape. Um, anyway, it's quite complicated, but it works. And that's maybe the most amazing thing that you, you can see uh, on Tool Assisted Speedrun because it's really fun, artistic, amazingly complicated to do and really, really am amazing to watch. Okay, so thanks to Ryuto, we have this, uh, this amazing run. Okay, uh, in conclusion, because with, uh, yeah, finally that's all, already the end of this uh, lecture, um, I wanted to show you something because we know that uh, a lot of people think that tool assisted speedrun are only made on emulators and it will only run on emulators even if it's if the emulators are really close to the real console it will not be able to run on a real console and I would tell you you're wrong because this is something we call the nest bot and what is the nest bot? Eh, how to say that the the tool assisted speedrun player on a real match on a real machine on a real nest so thanks to 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 our friend he, he made a I would say a movie player for his own NES. So you can find how it's made uh, on instructable.com. It's called the Nesbot. Uh, it's based on a Arduino and you can play to less assisted speedrun on a real machine. So it proves two things. First, that tool assisted players are amazing because it works. <laughs> First, they are making great runs. And also that the emulators are really, really close to the truth or are the truth actually when you are emulating a game you are so close to the real machine that it's even work on a real machine okay so this is it i think we are going to 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 say goodbye uh, i hope that you you liked this lecture about the tool assisted speedrun i tried to be uh, as good as i can we are doing it in french usually so it's a bit easier for me to to speak french also I hope you like it. Uh, I hope that uh, you can. Uh, you, we, I said nothing that was too stupid or anything. And I hope to to see you soon. Maybe in uh, watching 88 miles per hour because it's still uh, it's uh, still under subbing. And maybe one day we'll do it in English anyway. Okay, so bye bye everyone. I hope you you like it and uh, and see you. Bye bye.